Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're sharpening a crosscut saw. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Let's dive in. A few weeks ago, I did a video on sharpening a rip cut saw. And that's really the basic. If you're wanting to get into saw sharpening, start with a rip cut. Once you get that done, then you can do a cross cut because everything you learned in the rip cut you'll need for the cross cut, but then the cross cut has extra things that the rip cut doesn't have. But what exactly is the difference between a cross cut saw and a rip cut saw? Well, a rip cut is basically like a whole bunch of chisels in a row and every one of those teeth peels out a small piece. It's great when you go with the grain because you can make all those little tiny curls come with a rip cut saw. But when you're cutting across, if you ever tried to cross cut with a chisel, it's just a mess. So in that case, the cross cut is basically a knife and a whole bunch of knives and each one cutting either side of the slot you're cutting out. So with a rip cut, we need to sharpen a chisel. That makes it relatively easy. But with a cross cut, we need to sharpen knives. It's a little more tricky. If that didn't make as much sense to you, I've got a whole video where I go into far more detail and show them close up. So I'll leave links to that down below. Uh, speaking of links, I'll also have a link to the video of the rip cut saw that we did recently. Go and watch that before you do this. Uh, understand how to sharpen a rip cut saw before you try to sharpen a cross cut saw. And also, speaking of links, I'll put a whole bunch of others down below. So if there's other information or other questions you have, or if you want to make really big cross-cut saws like, you know, lumberjacks might use, I'll even have videos to that down below. First thing we need to look at is file selection. I talked about this a lot more in the rip cut video, so I'm not gonna go into that much detail. And the same things apply. You don't want the tooth to come up into the middle of the face of the file, otherwise you're gonna be wearing out that twice as fast. And the middle of the file is what actually sharpens the cutting edge. So just like with the rip cut, I'm gonna take the file and set it down in there and I'm gonna see that, oh my, that comes absolutely nowhere near the middle. And this is the one I was doing with that rip cut file. Let's grab a slightly smaller one and put that in there and yeah, that one doesn't even get near. Now I could do it with a bigger one, but that's gonna create a bigger gullet at the bottom of the tooth and I might not want that. That one's getting pretty close to what I want. I could go a hair smaller, but this one's big enough that I can actually see it. And if I go all the way down here to the needle file, now the tooth is past halfway on the face of the file. I'm gonna use this larger file right here to show you what all is going on. With a rip cut, we want it at 90 degrees to the plate. But with a cross cut, we actually want it at about 30 degrees. Some people have it at 20, some people do it at 10 for a hybrid cut. But for all cross cuts, there is a rotation to the file. That is called fleam. So if there is fleam in a saw, that makes it a cross cut saw. If there is no fleam and it's 90 degrees to the plate, that makes it a rip cut saw. The next question is how much do we roll the file? That roll is called the rake. On this particular saw, that's the toe and back this direction is the handle. So for a lot of rip saws, we'd actually have a rake making it aggressive so that this back edge of the file is almost vertical. For a lot of cross cuts though, you want almost no rake at all and you want it to be flat on the top. Or if you want it to be a little aggressive, you can just roll it forward a hair. So in this case, I'm gonna set up my saw filing jig to a 30 degrees of fleam and on the back, I have about five degrees of rake. If you don't know exactly what you want, then set your file in there and see what did the last person sharpen it at. And you can actually set it up to whatever that rake and fleam is because the tooth will generally or should hold it right at whatever angle it was last sharpened at. Normally I go right into jointing the teeth, but for the video, and if you ever have problems seeing it, I like to bring a Sharpie in here and just hit the top of every tooth with the Sharpie. That'll give you a visual reference to make it a little bit easier to see them when you're actually doing the sharpening and jointing. Yes, I do actually joint the teeth every time I sharpen it. Um, if I'm hand sharpening, I just find it a good use. And most of the time, if you get really good at it, you're only gonna need one or two passes with the jointer to really clean it up. And it's just a simple mill file. I'm gonna hold it on here at 90 degrees, start at one end, and run to the other. And I wanna come back here and make sure that I hit the top of every tooth. What I'm looking for is a shiny spot on the top of every tooth. You can see that one's shiny, and that one's shiny, and that one's shiny, but the ones in between, uh, those are dull. So I need to go one more time until all of them are shiny. So again, we joint. And now looking at them, there's a shiny spot on the top of every single tooth along the saw. So if the tooth currently has a big flat spot on it, our new sharpening point should hit right at that flat spot. So we're gonna sharpen them all down until this shiny flat spot here disappears and now we have a point that we can't actually see the shininess on it anymore. So now we're gonna go down every other tooth and I'm just gonna go until that flat shiny spot disappears. In most cases, 
It's just one stroke or a stroke and a half. All of my pressure is straight down. I'm not pushing onto one tooth or the other. I'm just pushing the file straight down. Unless I need to profile a specific tooth, that straight down pressure is what you're looking for. And now we can kind of zen out and just hit every other tooth. And now that I've gone all the way from one side to the other doing every other tooth, I need to take this whole thing out and flip it around. So one of the things I like about this saw vise is I can unclamp it, clamp up the whole thing, rotate it around, and now I can cut the other teeth. On the saw filing guide, I also need to rotate the fleam 30 degrees in the opposite direction. Because we're filing from the opposite direction, we need 30 degrees the other way. And then just like before, go until the shiny spot disappears. And before you know it, that's the last one. And after that, we can take it out and give it a test drive. You want to see a nice clean surface on the entry and a relatively clean surface on the exit. This is a fairly coarse crosscut saw, so having a little bit of ragged in there is not a problem, but I'll take that. Really nice. Now, if you really want to take off your skills, you get a sewing needle and you set it on there and hopefully those points should hold it and so it should slide right down them. Um, but yeah, I've only gotten that to work a few times. Crosscut saws are a lot harder to sharpen than rip cut saws. Most monkeys can pick up a rip cut saw and make it work pretty quickly. Crosscut saw, it's a step harder. But you don't have to be perfect with it. You just have to be better than dull, which is most of the time. So once you're okay at doing a rip saw, then take on a crosscut saw. You're not going to make it any worse unless you do something really crazy with it, but most of the time you're going to end up with a saw that works phenomenally well. Yeah, it could be better, and skill is something that comes over time. Don't expect it to be perfect on the first try, but you can't expect it to be functional. So don't worry about it. Jump in and have a little bit of fun. Saw sharpening is a skill. It is not something you can learn by watching a video. So get out in the shop and give it a try. And if it goes wrong, then oh well, you can grind them off and start again. It's one of those things where it's kind of a, a low loss situation and you can have a lot of fun really learning to do a new skill. The only way you're gonna learn it is to jump in. Have a little bit of fun and see what comes out. And who knows, maybe you'll be able to do the uh, needle down the saw blade. So I hope you like this. If you have any questions, throw those in the comments down below. I'll also leave links to the other old videos I have on it because each one has, comes out from a little differently. And there's lots of other good saw sharpening videos out there. So watch a few others and see what you can get. But most importantly, get out in the shop and give it a try. You'll never learn until you do. So let me know your thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, comments down below, or even the people who put comments down below. Thank you, that really helps out the channel. Anytime you do that, it really helps us grow because it gets us in front of more people. So you can join those people who put comment down below, down below, or you can join these people over here. Those are some of the fantastic, wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people over on Patreon. Because without patrons or members, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you guys. Without you, we wouldn't be here. So if you'd like to find out more about that, you know what to do. Links, Patreon, description, all that stuff. I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is not a dull video like, like most of mine. This one's actually kind of sharp. It's edgy. It, it cuts right to the point.